Hello and welcome to this News Mobile special. We have a special guest in the News Mobile studio today, Tilak Devishar, who is a veteran, I would say, strategic expert and also served as Special Secretary in India's External Intelligence Agency, uh, RNW. Welcome to News Mobile, Tilak. What about uh, the Pakistani Army and ISI? Do you really think that they want peace with India? Because there is a sense that for, for their own survival, this whole bogey and the fact that they they have to sustain terrorism because they realize they're not going to get any funding they're not going to get that importance in pakistani society if this whole india pakistan uh, dispute or squabble so to say is not there i th I, th I don't think so it's on the agenda of the pakistan army to have good relations because then as you mentioned the rationale for the pakistan army hogging over 30 percent of the budget just uh, dissipates if you have good relations absolutely number one number two the reason for Pakistan's existence is anti-India. Their DNA is anti-India. They have no other cementing factor to keep Pakistan together as a nation. They tried it. Jinnah's whole philosophy was that Islam will provide the glue to blend the various ethnic nationalities of Pakistan together. That failed when Bangladesh got created because for East Pakistan, the then East Pakistan, language was far more important than religion. Likewise, if you look at Balochistan, you look at Sindh, you look at Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, for them, they are all Muslims. Yet, despite being Muslims, they are fighting. There is a lot of sectarian tensions. So it is not Islam that is keeping them united. So what the government is doing, the army is doing, is to raise anti-India sentiments as the glue that will keep the various ethnic nationalities together. And that being so, unless Pakistan finds a positive identity for itself, it will continue to be anti-India, whether it is General Bajwa, whether it is Rahil Sharif, or whoever comes tomorrow. And so, so you think that we, we require uh, multiple options to deal with Pakistan. That's the reason why only diplomacy or only uh, what our P6 keep on doing will not will not work with Pakistan. Absolutely. I mean, if you just look at it, for the last 70 years, every government in India, every government in India has tried to live or develop a good neighborly policy towards Pakistan. Our finest diplomats have been trying to implement these policies. There have been hundreds of black channel talks, 1.5 track, 1.2 track, 0.2 yeah. track, 3. None of them have worked. Absolutely. So, this has to ask, the, or no, raise the question, why is this so? And the reason for this is precisely because it does not suit Pakistan to have good relations with India. Do you really realistically think that we can end cross-border terrorism from Pakistan through some of the means, the template means through diplomacy, through uh, peace talks, or do you require uh, some other maybe covert options or maybe uh, a surgical strike uh, you see, it's, it's a question of mindset. Yeah. You can do one surgical strike, maybe you can do 10 surgical strikes. But the question is, if the Pakistani mindset remains that they need these assets to force India into a weakened position to come on the negotiating table, they will continue in some form or the other. So unless and until you can push that tap off, change the mindset. Uh, now this financial action task force is the greatest thing of Pakistan because they're not doing enough to control any money laundering and the financing of terrorism. This is a very positive step and India has to make sure that they keep putting pressure on the international community to pressurize Pakistan that whatever commitments they've undertaken, the 26 point action program that they've undertaken is actually implemented because that will choke the funding of groups like the lashkar e taiba and the jaish e mohammed and that will effectively make sure that terrorism peters out. I don't see it ending totally but it will certainly peter out to a large extent. And that is the way forward. So do you think that uh, uh, cross-border terrorism from Pakistan, uh, what is the strategy that we need? Do you think that conventional ways can uh, help us combat cross-border terrorism? Do we require uh, some uh, strategic options? You see, cross-border terrorism, you can do one surgical strike, you can do 10 surgical strikes. But so long as the Pakistani mindset remains that they require terrorists to bring India in a weakened position on the, on the table for talks, Terrorism in Pakistan, from Pakistan, will continue in one form or the other. You have to get to that mindset, you have to change that mindset. And one of the ways of changing it, for example, is this Financial Action Task Force. Pakistan has been grey listed recently. For, uh, and this is where we have to ensure, working with the international community, that the commitments that Pakistan has given, the 26 point program that they have agreed to, to reduce money laundering and the financing of terrorist organizations, is actually implemented. But that will choke the funding of Lashkar-e-Taiba, of Jaish-e-Mohammed and other networks 
to and once that is effective but their assets are taken over then terrorism will gradually peter out unless and until that is done and the international community continues to apply pressure on to pakistan i don't think the terrorism from pakistan will really uh, come to an end we can do we can do a muscular option surgical strikes or whatever but the mindset has to change and the mindset will change when the pockets start to change do we have the capacity to do mount uh, covert uh, strikes and especially in some of these uh, terror uh, kingpins well you know the surgical strikes across the loc i think uh, uh, which was done in response to uh, their actions yeah. i think was effective the fact that pakistan did not acknowledge it shows that it was effective